what is it specifically that IHC does that you would like to see perhaps done on a national level? There's not as much greed in IHC as you see on the national level. And, the greed and it's is more transparent. And the greed is where? The greed is among the physicians or the executives? I, I believe it's among the executives and the administrative costs. Do I have the, the blueprint in my hand? No. Does it need to be fixed? Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about um, the issue of bipartisanship. When can you work with uh, um, members from across the aisle? I think you start working with them from the get-go. You don't sit on your hands and say no. You know, I, I've been using the slogan, I, I'm with the party of hope, not the party of nope. And I'm, I'm pleased to say I have a good friend in Senator Orrin Hatch. I know that I could work with him and that I have, I've been, had the opportunity to be involved in public service for most of my life, mm -hmm. and especially the last several years, I have been on the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. I've been able to reach across the aisle. I've been able to bring people to a consensus. I don't always know every issue as I get into it, but as I study it and learn and figure out a way to help the people, that's what I love to do. What, what, what specifically uh, do you think you would bring with regard to your personality? You said you like to fix problems. Uh, uh, fix I problems, think with my problems. personality, I can get in and I can communicate. I can reach across the aisle, and I can call people to the task that's in front of them, and that's the people's business. Once I'm elected, I can go back. I'm going to be representing three million of the best constituents in this country, and I believe that their needs have been forgotten for too long. Once I'm elected, I will be the best salesperson that the Senate has seen from the state of Utah. That's what a senator is, is a salesman. And I'm a pretty good salesman. I get in and I will represent the needs. And you'll hear the word Utah addressed more on the Senate floor and in the media. I will hire someone to push the state of Utah and to bring business into Utah. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming today. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, gentlemen, how is the dynamic different here in Utah, the reddest state in America, for Democrats in their caucus meetings? Well, it's a small meeting. Let's just mm -hmm. put it that way. They, they, they joke that they could do it in a phone booth. Uh, <laughs> sometimes nobody shows up, uh, and often it's one or two people. It varies a little bit by the demography and the, and the nature of the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, some neighborhoods are more democratic and would have more people participate, but generally it's a much lower rate of participation. That doesn't mean it's in, unimportant, as the Senate race that we're talking about on your program uh, tonight indicates. And it will be, I think, important in Utah's second congressional district, where incumbent Jim Matheson is seeking renomination. He is being criticized from the left right now in the nomination phase for not being more supportive of health care reform and other mm -hmm. issues. And so there will be a, a battle there, and uh, there will be an effort on the part of the candidates from his left to get delegates so that they can give uh, Matheson a strong signal at the convention. Yeah, a run for his money. BYU Center for the Study of Elections and Democracy has been polling Utahns via email to learn which topics are on voters' minds. Professor Patterson, I understand you brought along some of those results. What can you share? Well, I think the biggest uh, uh, result that uh, jumps out at us from these polling numbers is the, the anger or the distrust or the uh, suspicion that most uh, voters in the state of Utah seem to have with regard to Washington, D.C. Uh, it's no surprise that President Obama is not all that popular. He uh, has 66 or thereabouts uh, uh, disapproval rating. Uh, Congress, with all of the discussion about health care reform and earmarks and all kinds, uh, has even a lower approval rating. About 90 percent of, of Utahns express disapproval with the way Congress is handling its job. So I think what we really are seeing is this phenomenon of, of, of anger with the way politics is conducted in, in Washington. Um, what did you find out Professor, or Senator Bennett's approval ratings are? Well, yeah, I think Senator Bennett has uh, some, some, some issues with regard to uh, being caught up in this whole Washington scene. Uh, this anger with Washington, D.C. Is, is, seems to me an undertow that can carry away a lot of incumbents. And so with uh, someone like Senator uh, Bennett, his uh, favorability ratings, as we rank them, are about one to one. About half uh, 
uh, favor, uh, have, have high favorability uh, ratings of, of, express high favorability ratings of Senator Bennett, and about half don't. And, and that's, that's not necessarily what you want as an incumbent after three terms, kind of a one-to-one -one ratio like that. I don't know if you'd agree, Professor Magliza. No, those are low numbers historically. And comparatively within the same survey, Senator Hatch, who's not running for re-election this time yeah. and therefore isn't having to defend his record in the way that Senator Bennett is, is about 10 points higher on the favorability scores among the same survey respondents. So it, it's not affecting everybody in Washington to the same degree. It doesn't affect, for instance, Jason Chaffetz or Rob Bishop yeah. nearly as much as it's seeming to hurt Senator Bennett. Yeah, coming up on this 2010 cycle, uh, voters seem to be focused on, on those who are going to be on the ticket. And, uh, and, and I think um, uh, they're, they're, they're looking at 2010 yeah. as, a, as, as a year of change. So what did the polls show about the Tea Party movement? Yeah, the Tea Party movement is one of those uh, 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 movements that uh, hits the national stage every once in a while and shows that the anger and, uh, and distrust that people have of Washington, D.C. Can, 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 can be mobilized into something larger than more than just a, a sentiment. And what we find is about, uh, what is it, about half of, of the Utah voters know something about the Tea Party movement and about 2020. Uh, 3, 24 percent uh, strongly support the, the goals of the Tea Party movement. And, uh, but once again, like all of these different movements, uh, we tr t try to make a lot of them. Uh, about a quarter, once again, of Utah voters don't know much yeah. about the Tea Party movement. And of those who strongly support the Tea Party movement, they're the, they're the group that's most strongly uh, opposed to Senator Bennett, see him in the l least favorable light. And so the big question, Katie, as we, as we look to the precinct caucuses is, who's going to show up? Uh, will it be those who are motivated by the passion of the Tea Party yeah. movement? Are they going to turn out in large numbers? If so, it won't be as good a night for Senator Bennett, these survey results would predict. If it's the more regular party members who go year in and year out, who are conservative but maybe not quite as, as eager as the current wave of Tea Party movement to kinds of people, then okay. Senator Bennett may well do well. Yeah, this, Just, is, the, this is the real question, and, 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 and Professor Magleby hit it right on the head. Can you mobilize this movement into something real? It, yeah. Right now it seems to be a lot of anger, a lot of emotion, but can they organize themselves to actually get uh, their people out to the caucuses? Thank you. You can participate in a caucus meeting and may even find yourself becoming a delegate to a state party convention. Watch your local newspaper for caucus locations, or call the county or state office of your party to find details on where to go and how to participate. A special thanks now to Professor Kelly Patterson and Dean David Magleby. We'd also like to thank our candidates who participated with us. I'm Katie Chrysler. Thanks for watching.